welcome to another Space Invaders themed arcade game tutorial. This is Matt with Nightrun Studio and in this video we are going to look at how to import some enemy ships into your game and get them moving around in a Space Invaders like pattern. Let's get started. So first off before I do anything else I'm going to need to import some ship graphics into my game. I'm going to use these two ships here that I created in Photoshop. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to take a second to also bring in a little background to make things look prettier, as well as a cityscape so that it looks like I'm actually defending something in my game. I'm going to drag this space right here into my game. And I'll just use the rec tool to resize this to fit my camera size. And my cityscape, on the other hand, I do have to do a little work with. It was also made on a 32 by 32 grid like my ships, I'm going to make it have no filter and set my format to RGBA 32-bit, just like I did with my ship in the first tutorial. At this point, I can drag it into the game. If for some reason your cityscape is not showing up, or perhaps is stuck in behind this space background, all you need to do to fix that is click on the space background itself, go into your sprite renderer, and move it back a layer. I'm going to set mine at negative one just to avoid future problems. All right, already this game is looking much more interesting. I'll now click on my ships and repeat the same process with these. At this point, I will drag them up into my hierarchy and let's do both ships at once here. Now, first thing you'll notice is that these ships are oriented in the wrong direction. I want them to be facing downwards. This is easy to fix by going into my transform component and just changing the Z rotation to 180 degrees. Now it would be really tempting at this point to just start coding these ships and getting them moving about so that they move to the side. When they reach the boundary at the edge they move down and then come back across. However, if I did that the ships would actually bounce into each other each time they go to a new layer and it would create quite a mess. What I actually am going to do instead is just like in Space Invaders where all the ships move together. I'm going to create one large object that moves all of the ships at once. To do that, I'm going to head into my hierarchy. I'm going to right click and create an empty object. I'm just going to call this one ships. And then I'm going to highlight both of my ships and I'm going to make them a child of the ships parent object. Now when I click on ships, if I move it, it will move all of the ships at the same time so that I don't have to worry about them bouncing into each other. Now that we've done that, we're ready to do some coding. So again, while clicked on my ships, because I don't want the individual ships moving, just the parent object, I'm going to go add component, new script, and I'm going to call this one ship movement. Now, if you remember last time when we made our player controller, we used this line here, accessing the transform and then translating it to the right. We're actually going to use almost that exact same code this time around. So let's head into ship movement, into our update function, which is fired constantly every frame throughout the game. And once again, we're going to want to tra translate our ships within their transform component. We want to go to the right. The only difference this time is that we're not going to have any player input. We're just going to have them move on their own. You'll notice that Unity is not liking my move speed variable, and that's just because I haven't declared it yet for this script. So if I come up here underneath the class, I can do that. We're going to make this public so that we can edit it in Unity. It is a float, which is a decimal number, and we'll call it move speed. Now back in Unity, when I hit play, you'll notice that nothing happens at first, but if I give a value to this move speed, my ships will begin to move at whatever speed I want them to. At this point, we have a problem as they're just going off the screen. If I go into my scene view, and zoom out, you'll notice that they're just continuing to go on to the right, and we definitely will want to fix that. In our last tutorial, we added boundaries to the two sides of our map, and all those are is simply empty game objects with box colliders put on them. And what we want to do now is make it so that our ships collide with those and then come back in the other direction. Now to do this, we're not actually going to put colliders on each individual ship to sense when they hit it. We're going to create one collider for the ship's in general. And so I'm going to go add component and we'll add a box collider 2D. We're going to edit that collider and essentially what we just want to do is make sure that it covers all of our ships. Now later on I'm going to add more ships and I'll want to edit this but we want it to be as wide as our ship so that it looks like when the first ship touches the wall they can all move down. It doesn't need to be particularly tall. In fact it can be as skinny as you want but all we want is so that when the ships start moving sideways that collider hits the boundary and then we'll tell it that we want it to move down and start going in the opposite direction. 
First thing we want to do is make it so that when they hit that wall, they come back in the other direction. To do this, we're going to use a new function called an on trigger enter 2D. Now, if you just start typing it into Visual Studio, it will supply you with the options and we want on trigger enter 2D. You can hit enter to fill that in. Now, all that this line of code here means is that whenever you enter a 2D trigger, it's going to fire whatever is beneath this. And this last part is telling you it's going to create a new variable, a collider one, and it's going to call it collision. So from now on, anytime I use the word collision, it will be referring to the thing I just hit. So when our ships, when they hit something, we're going to have them check to see if the thing they hit, so collision dot game object dot tag is equal to boundary. And if that object is a boundary, then something's going to happen. Now, all that means is simply that when our ships hit this side boundary, they're going to look at the game object. Then they'll head over to the inspector and look at the tag and see if it is tagged as boundary. Now, in order to do this, boundary is not automatically supplied by Unity. So you'll need to click Add Tag, hit plus, and type in boundary. Remember, capitals do matter here, so pay attention to whether or not you add one. And then you can go back to your boundary and make sure that it has the boundary tag selected. So now our ships will know when they collide with the boundary. The big thing we need to do now, though, is make sure that they actually do something when they hit it. And what we want them to do is to move in the opposite direction. This is actually going to be really easy. All we're going to do is take your move speed, and we're going to multiply it by negative 1. Now, you'll notice that Unity does not like it when we just put multiply. And that's because we're setting a value here. So I need to put times equals. And all that means is that if we are moving to the right at, say, a speed of 5, now we're going to start moving to the right at a speed of negative 5, which actually means we're moving to the left. Now, in our script that we used the on trigger enter 2D function, and our ships at the moment, if you look at their box collider, are not labeled as a trigger. So we're simply going to hit that trigger button. And all that means is that this collider now, things can pass through it, so it can have ships inside it with their own colliders, and they won't bounce off of it but it will still fire a trigger when it hits a boundary. At the moment, if we were to start the game, our ships would move to the side, the colliders would collide, but they wouldn't notice it, and they would continue to pass through each other. That's simply because we have not yet put a rigid body on this collider, and so it can't sense the collisions. So just like we did with our player the other day, we'll click Add Component, Rigid Body 2D. And remember, this adds all physics to our character, and we don't want our ships falling out of the sky, so let's just take gravity off. Additionally, down in the constraints section here, we're going to freeze the Z rotation. What this is going to do is make it so that when this collider hits the wall, it doesn't have a strange physics collision that causes them just to go a little bit off balance, in which case when they come back the other way, they would be set at a weird angle, and it would cause all sorts of weird ricocheting problems. So do remember to freeze that Z rotation. Now when I get into my game mode, I can start those ships moving. Let's get them going a little more quickly. And when they hit the side, they just bounce back in the other direction forever. It's looking pretty good. We're almost there. What we need to do now, though, is make sure that those ships are slowly creeping towards our player. So back in our code, what we're going to do to make this happen is just simply have our ship's position be moved a little bit each time they hit the collider. So before they change direction, we're going to get a hold of the transform of our ships which controls their position. And specifically, we want to look at the position line. And so we're going to make the transform position of the ships become equal to a new vector 3. So this is an x, y, z value. Now, we want their z, x to stay whatever it currently was. So we're going to type in transform.position.x, so meaning their x will stay the same. Their y, however, we want to change. So we're going to say transform.position.y but we want them to move downwards. So we're going to subtract 1 from that. So they will move downwards. And then their z will also stay the same. Transform.position.z. At the moment, the ships aren't going to do anything when they hit the player. We've definitely still got some work to do. But we've got ships in the game, and they are moving just like in Space Invaders. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial. If you found it helpful, please be sure to click like or subscribe to the channel. Till next time, this is Matt with Night Run Studio. Cheers.